the swamps of America's deep south hide an ancient mystery, a secretive predator from the age of the dinosaurs. No one knows exactly how long it lives or how big it can grow in these murky waters. A relic of prehistory, the alligator snapping turtle has hardly changed in millions of years. But it's unique, even among the highly specialized killers of the reptile world. The unsuspecting prey is deceived by a false worm in its gaping mouth, then ambushed in jaws that can splinter an alligator. The thing I like most about the alligator snapping turtle is the fact that it's out there and you can't see it. It's just down there in the water, in the swamp, and you just can't see it. The secrecy of such a huge animal. It doesn't sit out and bask and announce its presence. You don't know where it is. Reptile hunter and scientist Mark O'Shea has seen the alligator snapping turtle in captivity, but it's one of the 10 most endangered species on Earth, and he's never seen one in the wild. These turtles can survive without ever leaving the water. In fact, only the females come on land once a year to lay their eggs. But the voracious meat eater is itself a sought after delicacy. Unfortunately, overhunting has put the species in danger throughout its range in the southern United States. Mark has come to southern Louisiana, Cajun country, to see if the last few turtles can avoid the cooking pot. Mark's guide in the swamps of southern Louisiana knows the bayous as well as anyone. Hayden Reno began trapping turtles at the age of five, and it certainly wasn't to protect them. We used to dress clean 20 and 30 turtles a day. Really? And we used to cut the heads off, and, uh, and it was a fact that they would sit on that floor, and sometimes there'd be six or eight heads on the floor of the fish market there, and they'd be snapping. And the same thing with the uh, hearts. The hearts we used to take out, cut the hearts out of the turtle, and put them in a little glass jar or something, and watch them beat for hours. Not an appetizing thought, but Hayden no longer traps these turtles for sale. He now lends his deep local knowledge to conservation efforts. He traps these turtles to help scientists like Mark find out about their world and how we can help them survive in ours. What is that, what is that floating right there in front of us? Right in front of us. Right by that water there. That's but, a carapace, so it's alley snapper. It's here. Quick, 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 he's moving. Paddle me towards him. Grab his tail. I've got him. That looks like a live one, huh? Yeah, that's the one on the line. Watch his, watch him. He's yeah, hello, my boy. On underneath you. Let's have that hook out of you. Hayden's on the bayou every day, but this is only his second catch in weeks. I've See got them him, long flowers? We used to carry them long pliers just for that reason. There you go. Got it. Wash him, it's because it's cut his lip a bit, but yeah, he's a rugged fellow. He'll survive. Most of the time we use a hook that dissolves. If they do well, swallow it or break loose or something like that, we always got a hook that will dissolve in a couple weeks and it wouldn't hurt them. It's really nice to, to meet one in the wild now, actually in his own terrain. This one's not going into any soup. This looks perfect alligator snapping. It is. And the alligator, the regular the alligators are back here, but they're not even showing up too much today. But there is a no, few. There's, seen, one, uh, there's one by that log up there. See his head up? The alligator, in the middle shot. of the canal. Yep, he's going. Went down. Straight ahead of him. Oh, yeah, yeah, get up close. Coast on. Oh, he's gone under. He'll come up again. Oh. 
Like a kid in a candy store, Mark can't resist the chance to catch an alligator in the bayou. But once it goes under, an alligator's almost impossible to find. Mark has to feel for it on the bottom with his feet. I'll find him under the water. There's a chance I can get hold of him without him noticing. He went down somewhere here. He's about five or six foot long. What's that? Hayden and Mark take a closer look at the two recent catches. With their powerful jaws, the turtles can eat almost anything. Fish, small alligators, even other turtles. If he bit you, uh, he, he could possibly take your fingers off, um, or at least sever them deeply. And break your bones for sure. He, yeah, he'd splinter them. There's a lot of force. Around their mouth is, is like knives. And when they get something in their mouth, they don't open it back up. You tend to be careful if you're seeing what they can do with sticks and, you know, mop panels and stuff like that. Cajun cooking is world famous. Turtle soup can be found above gumbo and black-eyed peas on practically every menu in New Orleans. The city's restaurants remind Mark that the turtle he caught was one of the very few left in southern Louisiana, the only state that doesn't protect the species by law. The alligator snapping turtle is a very primeval looking creature and it looks a creature of the past. Indeed, it's in danger of becoming a creature of the past um, if there aren't more controls on its harvesting down here in South Louisiana. Here, it represents a meal, whereas up in Northern Louisiana, where the Cajun tradition doesn't exist, or at least not to the same degree, um, it's still possible to find sizable populations in a state which doesn't protect the animal. Mark sets out for Black Bayou National Wildlife Reserve in northern Louisiana. He teams up with one of the most experienced turtle researchers in America. J. Brent Harrell's work will shed light for the first time on the life cycle of this secret reptile. But he has a major problem. The turtles live so long that some of them were here before he was born, and they'll still be around long after he's gone. Brent lays nets to catch the turtles. There's been a thunderstorm bringing out fish and other prey. Mark's anxious for evidence that the northern Louisiana turtle population is healthy. All right, let's see what we got in here. Grab this other foot. What you got there? Three walk. alley snappers. Roll the loop. Roll the hook. Three alley snappers. Alligator snappers avoid humans if they can but they're ferocious when removed from the water. If the net isn't emptied quickly, this soft-shelled turtle could be crushed in their razor-sharp jaws. Well, the, da the danger is this soft-shell has no protection. No, I think he missed him, but it was really close. That big... That was very close. Yeah, he pulled his head in at the right moment. Put, the bag, put her in the bag if you'd yeah, like to. I will do. See, I get her out of the way. This soft-shell turtle, got a hell of a bite, I thought she can reach anywhere, but it's got what its name suggests, a leathery, soft shell. 
Data from three alligator snappers is a good start. They're checked and released, and Mark and Brent move on to the next net. Now, how do you want to play this? Well, let's see what we got first. Ready? One, two, three. He's a big fellow. You go around 65, 70. Pound. Pound. Males typically, you'll catch like an 80 pound, 100 pound male. You know, they, of course, they get much larger. They get over 200 pounds, but normally you don't catch them like that. Females, a big female will run anywhere from uh, 40 to 55 pounds. I've got him sitting on my knee. Ooh. Okay, he's a big boy. Okay, let me see if I can pick him up. Yeah. All right. Just... Got him. Okay, the net. Let's get this net out of the way. All right. What do you reckon the status of uh, a big alligator snapper is as, as a predator in, in, in a bayou like this? This turtle is a top predator in its habitat. Uh, once it gets up, to, especially to this size, there's nothing else, including an alligator, an American alligator, can hurt it. It's, uh, except man. Except for man. And the pollution caused by man. If there are poisons in any environment, they'll pass all the way up the food chain. The top predator gets all of them, and in these swamps, that's the alligator snapping turtle. They're not called alligator snapping turtles because they snap alligators, although they could take out and severely damage a small alligator, but that's not, that's not where they get their name from. Um, they're, they're called alligator snapping turtles because they live in the same places as alligators. One of the things that I, I take personal pride in, and one of the reasons I like to study these turtles, is because being from the southern United States, uh, a native of Louisiana, is that this, this turtle is native to the southern United States, and it makes it very unique. There's nothing else like it anywhere. We probably have a bubble trail. Bludunk. There's his bubbles. There goes his bubble. Yep. Trail. Yep. The next net yields a memorable encounter with the reptile that gave the alligator snapping turtle its name. Oh, yeah, oh there's a big, big. Oh my God, he's a big one. That's a big head. There's two, two three, at least. This will be what you came for. There's alligator. a big one. Later, three. Oh, and an alligator. We got a big mess. Is what we got. We've got three snapping turtles at least and an alligator. That's a good hundred pound plus turtle. Go got on, an this. alligator. We got a, There's uh, another turtle under there. Got an alligator. Two, three alligator snappers. Mark and Brent go for the alligator first. If they're not careful, an alligator snapping turtle could do some serious damage to the other big predator. Mark, what we would do. He's going in through here. That's the throat. Right. If you hold that, I can pull him. I'm going to get his tail you know? for you. Okay. Front leg here, you know. Okay, you can get that. Yeah, they got it. You got it? Yeah, mate. Come on. Got the front leg. Okay, it's that head. That's your one more. Straight up into the. 
boat and then I'll grab his head. One Okay, okay, I'm gonna take care of them. The turtles are gonna get out. I'll get the gator. I'm gonna swing around and drop them into the boat. Come on, mate, here. I'll take the legs off me. One of our turtles got out. Hey, one of our turtles. We haven't lost one, have we? Yeah. And did he put a hole in it? Did he? I don't know. He, uh, he may have. We've got the alligator out, and so we can drop him back into the swamp. Get turn our attention to the <coughs> to the. Ah. He's quite a handful. He's quite a handful. He's not wrong. There's a bit of a splash. Right, I'll give you a hand with a snapper as soon as the sense comes back into me arm. With the alligator gone, they're ready for the turtle. Judging from its size, it could be old enough to be Mark's grandfather. Okay, so we bring the net on board. Yeah, I, yeah, I see the mate. Get the net. I get the it's already upside down, which is exactly where you want it. This, I think, is the biggest alligator snapping turtle I've seen, let alone caught. The other big one did get it, seems to have got out while we were fighting the alligator out, but this one is, uh, without a doubt, the better of the two. Oh, it's still gone. Just go to sleep now. Put this over. That'll help. I'm stuck. You put the sack over his head because it's nice and dark, and quite often reptiles will sort of shut down, go to sleep, when you cover the heads up. Look at this for a comparison. His nails are a bit longer than mine. <laughs> that was 110 pounds, and two pounds for the bag. Uh, I thought he was up around. He wasn't quite as thick as I thought he was. <sighs> 110 pounds is not far short of my weight. I'm a 134, I think. I'd say he's probably 95, 100 years old. If you figure acceleration of growth when they're young, a you few years, five to 10 years, then you can expect, say, a pound a year. And you can extrapolate that onwards. Onwards. With the data we have today, that's what we uh, estimate. Estimate. So he's probably uh, been here since the turn of the century. Just grab him and pick go of the park. Pick him up. This is probably the closest thing to a living dinosaur as you'll ever see. Yeah, sure is. Swamp dinosaur. <laughs> Off he goes. There you go. Oh, the boat's a lot lighter now. Officially, the alligator snapping turtle is still as threatened as the giant panda or the black rhino. A total of 18 catches in one day is encouraging and a surprise for Mark. But he has one more job to do. I came knowing that Louisiana did not have a conservation policy for, for alligator snapping turtles. And it was very disappointing to see in southern Louisiana the fact that the, the populations appear to have been decimated. It's brilliant to come up to the north of Louisiana and find that there is still a big population here. But I think the point has to be made that this is a population of big turtles. We haven't seen any babies in the wild. And Brent's concern is the fact that 
And man's interaction here is more subtle. The building of houses and lawns, which is altering the habitat around the bayous, to the point that the turtles may not actually be reproducing. And we could go on finding large snapping turtles here for the next 60 years, but finding increasingly small numbers of smaller ones. So it doesn't mean that the snapping turtle here is out of the woods. Brent releases hatchling turtles into Black Bayou every year, a vital gesture to end Mark's journey. So it, it's been poor, but we're going to release these little guys. Where'd you want, where'd you gonna oh, right in here, anywhere would be good. Uh, uh, get them some so shallow what, what water, some structure. Shallow water. Yeah, we want somewhere where they can, they can kind of get under the edge and they can hide. It's hard to believe that this little mite couldn't grow into that huge turtle we caught earlier. I guess you like releasing hatchlings. Oh yeah, you know it's not all about catching big turtles. It's uh, these little guys are interesting too, and uh, I really enjoy you know letting them go. It's kind of neat to to see what things that one of them will be around in a hundred years, you know? Look at this one. Like father, like son. Even at this age, he knows when to open his mouth. Now mark this turtle, it won't hurt you. Go ahead and let him bite your finger, and you can feel the well, pressure. That's not entirely true. That did hurt. Yeah. Like, like somebody jabbing a couple of needles into his finger. Even at that age, they have a powerful bite. They have bite. a powerful little bite. That's the last time I believe anything you tell me. Yes, you little monkey. Pop you in there where you can do that to fish. Up next on the Crocodile Hunter, Steve is definitely off on a wild adventure. He has always wanted to swim with the alligators, so he's going to the home of the alligator in southern Florida. He'll relocate some huge ones and get us as close as only he can. When Steve goes in after these gators, you're going to want to be right there with him. The Crocodile Hunter is next, right here on Animal Planet.